everyone. I'm Sarah, as Kevin said, here in Westland, just south of Portland in a beautiful treed area in front of obviously a very weird and unique home. You guys, thanks for having us here today. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming out. Tell us a little bit about this house and what you call it. As Kevin said, dome home, Star Wars home. What else? The Smurf house, dinosaur poop. <laughs> All the kids in the neighborhood definitely like the Star Wars house. And they were always sad that we don't dress up as Star Wars characters for Halloween. So it's on it, our list. Maybe we should start. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived here? We've lived here for two years, um, but the house was built in the late 80s, and it was built by a guy named Francisco Reinders, and he was a Dutch mime who trained under... Marcel Marceau. Marcel, so he was a mime artist. He moved here to teach at Lewis and Clark University, and he wanted to design an unusual home. So he started putting together the dome house, and it's actually nine domes, so... Uh, the one main dome he actually built and designed by himself. And then there's eight others, which he used from a decommissioned World War II aircraft carrier, the Bunker Hill. And it was being decommissioned in Zadell Yards in downtown Portland, Oregon. And he bought each dome for $50 and hauled them up here. And it took how many years to put it together? So the construction started in 1978 and roughly finished in 1983 so about five years to put it all together from what we understand and it was a lot of him and his friends working together and it was quite the project and the ship it came from the USS Bunker Hill is actually kind of famous during World War II it was hit by two kamikazes in very short succession so we get a lot of uh, history buffs wanting to check out the dome and there's been a lot of debate about uh, what parts of the uh, USS Bunker Hill were used, you know, as the domes. And as far as we can tell, in the 60s, the USS Bunker Hill was converted to uh, test electronics equipment. And so they had domes with, uh, the Navy had domes with radar equipment on the deck. And you can see photos. If you look up photos of the USS Bunker Hill online, you can kind of make out some of those domes on the various decks of the aircraft carrier. And so that's where we think uh, the domes came from. Uh, there's been debate whether it was actually like the turrets uh but we we don't think that's what it uh originally came from but maybe you guys can help us find out <laughs> we've looked at a lot of old photos <laughs> do you have any idea what inspired him well i think as far as we can tell like just in traveling back and forth they bought this property and um him and his wife at the time and they bought this property and there's no other real houses there's like a farmhouse up here on this in this area and so he's traveling back and forth from here to the uh, Portland Theater Group where he works, and that goes right by Zadell Yards. So we, as far as we understand, like he got inspired by what he saw in the Zadell Yards and kind of started putting things together that way. Um, that's part of it. Yeah, we're, he's passed away now, but we have talked to his wife who helped build it, and so we're learning a little bit more of the history, which has been very fascinating. That's awesome. Well, we're going to come back outside after, presuming that the rain yeah. holds off. We're right on the edge. But why don't we kind of head in? We may as well talk first about the bears on the front yeah. porch. What are they? So Francisco was worried that the domes were a little imposing and scary for young kids. So as an artist, he decided to make two bears to put out front to make it more inviting. And, and now, of course, they have the masks on them as well in these yes. COVID days. Yeah. Uh, they're safety bears. And we're originally from Alaska, and so everyone always says they should be polar bears. So that's on our list of dome projects. They they definitely need a little bit of work at this point. Yeah. Um, they've been neglected for a little while, so <laughs> that might be the next project. Oh, awesome. Well, can we head yeah. in? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, Do you want us to go you. through? Come on in. I'll let you open the door. <laughs> All right. So the dome house is still under construction. Um, there's still work being done. Um, it's much more better than it used to be. But as you can see right above, we still have some leaks that we're figuring out. And everything is sealed up now, not leaking, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> what was the house like when you moved in? Was it in pristine condition? No, that when we got the house, it, it, we got it out of bankruptcy court and it hadn't 
been kind of not lived in for, from what I understand, almost two years. So all the skylights had some form of a leak. Um, and, and when we got it, we kind of got it as it is. <laughs> and um, so when we started looking at things, the ceiling looked a little funny in some spots. And I, I poked my finger through uh, the drywall in one spot, about five gallons of water came out. Oh my so gosh. that kind of started, um, we tore out all the carpet that was in here. And um, there's sections we'll see later where, where it was pretty severe leaks, but it's very local. So that was the good thing is the worst of it was pretty localized. Um, and then we spent, actually this year we put, I think the outside construction is a polyurethane spray foam. Um, and then like they do on commercial buildings and then they cover it with a polyurethane coating. Um, and so we, we put about 65 or 70 gallons of the stuff uh, on the summer. So that kind of, resealed the roof and looks like we've done a pretty decent job so far. So <laughs> we just had a big storm here in Portland. So we put it to the test and there was no leaks. So <laughs> we were very happy. We're getting there. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, is this? Hey, uh, oh. hey guys. Uh, we, uh, we have a, a question come in about seeing uh, all eight uh, domes and uh, I'm going to share the photo of all the homes, all the domes here and just uh, at the end of the video. Uh, but we do have a little bit of feedback if uh, we can get the camera a little bit more steady uh, as we're going through uh, that would be helpful and uh, awesome. yeah, let's keep going so this is a painting of this home isn't it yeah so i was very excited for alex's birthday this year i had a local artist patrick no i commissioned him to do a painting of the dome going into outer space and so i was very excited about that and he does this really cool style of terracotta painting so that's yeah. awesome. But all oh, right, let's head in. This is the main dome. So this is the biggest dome. How tall is it? Uh, it's about at the very center. It's about twenty-two feet, and um, this is the only skylight that was commercially purchased. The uh, well, I think the other there's two small ones that were, but the the remainder you'll see they're they're all custom made. Um, and the this dome here was also custom made. It isn't, didn't come from the USS Bunker Hill. It's actually a construction of plywood paneling and steel T ribs that were all uh, custom rolled to get the shape. And um, the walls are a actually kind of spongy. <laughs> um, so it's the the walls are actually about uh, anywhere from like two to four inches thick of a uh, combination of uh, news, shredded newspaper with adhesive and an organic fire retardant. Um, we had it checked. We were, <laughs> we were a little worried that it might've been asbestos, but it turns out it's not, it's just all cellulose. So, um, and then on top of that, there is a lot of this, uh, kind of tooth color, uh, is, I think that's how you say it, um, which we discovered you to paint this stuff. It has so much surface area. You need <laughs> A lot of paint. So I mean, there paint. must there's probably a hundred gallons I would gather in this dome, uh, and there's a dome that we tried painting. We'll show later, and it's it's much smaller, only eight foot in diameter, and that took twenty five gallons to paint it. And we gave um, up. And we, and we sort of gave up. Gallons, hundred gallons. That's kind of what we figured. Um, and so the color, you might wonder why they ended up here. And what we discovered is that if you go to your um, garbage disposal, they they save the paint there. Uh, so Clackamas County here, if you go there, you can get paint that people have thrown out that's still good, and you can get it really cheap. And so what they did is they just got all the paints in one shot and mixed it together at once. And if you mix pretty much all commercial home paints together, this is the color you get. And so oh that's, <laughs> that's how it kind of ended up this way. Um, wow. Because you would just need an enormous amount of paint. <laughs> I think later on today we're going to be going to an artist's home where I think every color is very specifically chosen. Oh. So oh. in comparison, <laughs> put oh. all of the colors together. Yeah. Does this like yeah. like fall off at all? Like yeah. does it like it? Like, you know, we always wonder if you had like, cats if they would be able to like yeah. Yeah. pull it off. Oh. So, well, sometimes little pieces. It depends. Yeah, there's, there's it, it's different. Um, you can kind of see the texture and there's like spots that were probably spent more time where you can reach and that's pretty solid. 
Um, but the spots up, up top, every now and there's like a little bit that might crumble off. Um, it's almost like uh, the texturing that you get on drywall when it's yeah. like a really rough texturing and you, you brush it, it can like break off. But it, for the most part, it seems pretty stable. Um, the whole house was carpeted when we got it. And so Alex and I have done all the work ourselves except the flooring. So we ripped out all the carpet and then a company came in and did this nice acid wash. And we chose different colors for each room. So I feel like that life. must be a really comfortable zone sitting in yeah. that dome <laughs> chair. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of there. deer and birds. And so, yeah, it's a great place to sit and watch the wildlife. Francisco and his wife decorated the domes originally in kind of a mid century, mid century modern look. So I tried to stick with that kind of theme with use what we already had. So it's a mix. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. So then here's the TV zone, sort of the yeah. closest, if you see this by itself, yeah. would almost be a normal house. A normal yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you close it off from everything else? So it's kind of interesting. Um, it has, there's a couple of interesting things about it. So it, it has this sort of amphitheater effect. So we've had a couple live bands in, in here over the last couple of years. And um, you can put the band in there and the audience is out here and uh, we turn this into a big dance floor and uh, yeah, it's it has a really neat effect. And then uh, because there's so much insulation, the walls end up being probably near a foot thick. Um, you don't really hear much from the outside, which is kind of great. Oh, cool. <laughs> so. Is there a story behind all the animals along the top? Yeah. Yes, those are my prized possessions. Those are my grandpa's. He played with them as a child. And then he used to be a zoologist for the Bronx Zoo. And when he retired, um, a coworker made him Noah and his ark at the end. And so I thought it went perfectly with the animals. And so I've always had him displayed. And when we moved into this house, that was the first thing. I was like, oh, the animals can go up there. Oh, that's awesome. Then, some, of, some of the animals were missing their partner, but we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Um, so it's the kitchen area, I guess. Yeah. I guess there's one thing I might add here too. Yeah. Originally when this house was built, this used to be kind of like a uh, recessed or a uh, sunken, living, or room. sunken living room. So it's like about another uh, foot or 18 inches deeper right here. Um, and you can kind of see it in the original drawings on online, they show that. Uh, so we're not sure when that got filled in, but it used to be kind of this, this sunken hangout. Uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Okay, into the kitchen. Into the kitchen. So Francisco, he taught at Lewis and Clark University, which is a university right down the road. And he led the theater program. And one of his students was a boat carpenter. So he hired him to make all the cabinets. So the cabinets are kind of hard because it's a dome, but they did a really nice job. And then another one of his students was, uh, what do you call it, did tile. I forgot what that's called. Oh, not Mason. Tyler. A, a, a Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> and so he did the tile. The sound in the kitchen can be very different. It's either you're getting yelled at, or you can barely hear anyone. And the closer you get to the center, the weirder it gets. You get this. If you put the yes. camera like right in the center, and you speak, you get this kind of weird echo sound, <laughs> and then it kind of backs away. <laughs> I think it's interesting that it's such a sound rich house and yet the person who built it was a mine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we kind of joked about those ironies. <laughs> do, you, do you think the fact that he was a mine plays into, like all joking aside, does it play into any of the design of the house or what he was looking for? There's, I think, so there's, there's been, uh, rumors are in print we see like where he, he didn't trust quarters and things like that which <laughs> we're not very superstitious a little bit superstitious perhaps um, but kind of a, also very masterful artist in in you know a, a great deal of, of uh, a great variety of skills and so he did a lot of the um, the, the shop outside the Quonset hut is where he did a lot of the work for stage props and things like that so he, he had a great variety of skills and and I think uh, was very passionate about the work that he did. So just everything was a pro art project. <laughs> That's part awesome. of it. Yeah. Good. Okay. We can continue in here. 
This is our little dog's room, who's outside right now, because she's 20 years old and blind and deaf. They'll be running into us. Um, and actually, this is Francisco himself teaching at Lewis and Clark. Somebody gifted us his photo when we moved in. So that's awesome. Yeah, and we actually uh, recently discovered that he did a mime tour in Alaska in the 80s and actually came to Alex and I hometown of Prudhoe, Alaska and did a mime production, which <laughs> is kind of crazy. You can kind of see also the ceiling here and this skylight was one of the more damaged spots. So all these yellow walls were actually, we rebuilt all these, so we had to tear them all out. Um, so we got the walls up and went to work on the ceiling. Um, a lot of this structure had to be rebuilt. So we're, we're part way through. And if uh, leaks are gone this winter, we'll close it up. <laughs> So this is my favorite room. This is the main bathroom. And it's got great tile and all the windows. That ceiling's really good. Cool. Yeah, great place to take a bath. It's just lovely. And then there is a sauna that we are using as a pantry right now that has some original Francisco artwork. Tell us about the artwork, can you? I don't know much about it. Someone told us it's styled after what? It's like Mesopotamian? No. It's some kind of Egyptian. I, yeah. yeah it's a certain style as coffee or making. Yeah. Um, but we know Francisco did it, and we know that the sauna has never actually worked. <laughs> so, no. yeah, we talked to other previous owners, and so that was one of our goals is to get it working, but we're a little worried that the paint might drip off. Oh, not yeah. really sure. We're not artists. So yeah. we might need some help with that. It's something, <laughs> yeah. We'll see if we want to have a sauna in the house. Yeah. <laughs> what's the light like in here? Obviously today is an overcast Portland day, but what's yeah. it like when the sun's shining? Um, it's actually pretty impressive. Like as close walled as it, as it appears, the skies do add a lot of natural light. Um, there is some rooms, the next room we'll go into, it's probably one of the darker ones. I think just the orientation and, you know, the amount of trees on the property, it doesn't get as much light, but uh, this room stays actually pretty bright during the day. Um, the big, the kind of jellyfish looking dome. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's awesome. Oh, we got a light out. Yeah, I, I, noticed, <laughs> I noticed through this tour we've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can hey. move hey, to the uh, next Hey guys, room. before we move to the next room, we have a we have a question. Uh, is the dome yeah. home a designated as a historical home? That's so funny you asked that. That was one of the things that I investigated uh, during quarantine. Um, it is not, and it's not technically old enough here, but there is some exceptions. I looked into it. I can't remember why. I didn't um, pursue it. I think it was, it had something to do with like last year's we were home tour. We got, um, someone had brought it up, I think. Okay. Well, I did, yeah, we, it is not yet, but I have been thinking about doing that. <laughs> and I, do, I would hate it if it, this is an area, a suburb of Portland with a lot of more, um, I don't know, how is this from the 90s, yeah. maybe or early 2000s? I would hate to imagine this property is so gorgeous. Yeah. Somebody coming in and deciding, to put a uh, very large, more yeah. regular. Yeah. Oh, true. <laughs> Something cookie cutter. Yeah. Did you ever think like, did you ever consider moving into just a cookie cutter home or did you know I needed something original um, creative out of the gate? We've only lived in pretty typical houses beforehand. Yeah. Um, I think there's, I mean, I think we've been inspired by domes and, and things like that. I think, yeah. um, you know, there's, if you've ever read any of the work of Buckminster Fuller, um, yeah, it's pretty inspiring geodesic domes and things like that. So when we saw it, it was, it was pretty neat to kind of see maybe that kind of inspiration and potential here. And um, yeah, if, if we had to do it again after living in this dome, we might do it do it differently, but it could be a dome. <laughs> might <end up laughs> do it dome. differently, like maybe choose not to live in a dome home? Oh, or... no, uh, just a different arrangement of domes. <laughs> 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 this must be the one of the just two or three dome homes in this area. Is that right? 
Um, there's one there's, outside of Eugene. There's one in Eugene. There's one um, actually kind of north between here and Seattle. There's a dome there. I think there's a few. There's probably more that I don't. Actually, like, I think the Gear Heart isn't there. Oh, I think there's one in, on the coast. Yeah. The coast. There's a few little ones around. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. They're not as uncommon as you think, but right, they're yeah. Yeah, a little less common. <laughs> All right. Should we continue? Sure. Okay. Take us to the next spot. All right. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, this is our bedroom, the main bedroom. And this is actually a dome inside of a dome. Dome conception. Inception. <laughs> it feels so quiet in here. It is. Yeah. I don't know if it's more quiet it's than the other room. rooms, but it just feels so quiet and peaceful. It's definitely uh, pretty easy to go fall asleep here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is actually like the the darkest uh, of the domes, which yeah. kind of works out okay. There's no, there's a skylight, um, or I guess the stained glass through there. There's the six oh, yeah, little the stained skylights. Glass up there. Um, and then of course the door. So a little bit of light. There's a little. This this part is. You know, it has a fair amount of natural light, but once you're kind of in the bedroom area, it's it's pretty pretty dark. <laughs> is there a purpose behind those little skylights, like the design of them, where they are? Yeah. So as far as I can tell, there's a few in, in throughout the whole house. There's um, sort of holes that were in the steel domes themselves, and so I think as much as possible, Francisco tried to reuse those um, as kind of portals or skylights and so th those are the ones that are definitely custom uh, and have been a little bit tricky to get sealed but I think for now they're all sealed up pretty well um yeah so I, I think it's just trying to make use of what was already there yeah. a little bit and um working with what, what's around you so this is unique in this room this painting yeah tell so us about that when they first uh sprayed the um cellulose on the walls uh that they went to bed that night after after working on it and they heard this noise and they woke up and turned on the lights and saw that some of it was peeling away from the wall and so francisco as he uh <laughs> seem, seems to operate uh went and grabbed his art supplies and turned it into this tree so uh kind of turning lemons into lemonade all the way through <laughs> i wonder why it was that one spot where that started to happen it's it's hard to say yeah. there's um there's also, we heard from his wife at the time that uh, when they sprayed the polyurethane on the outside, it was a really hot day. And um, so once the, the foam hit the uh, hot metal, it started to expand even further than it normally should have. And so it kind of made this like elephant foot <laughs> effect on the outside. Um, and so he had spent a lot of time uh, shaving that back down and fixing it. So there's a lot of kind of trial and error and using definitely non-traditional uh, construction techniques. So yeah, it's it's hard to say. Wow. <laughs> Part of the uniqueness of the house. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like it would be so peaceful in here. It's yeah. it's pretty quiet. It's like a, um, a def like sound deprivation tank. A Except bit. when it's raining. That's oh, then it is very loud, which Alex and I actually really like because growing up in Alaska, everyone has tin roofs. So when it rains, it's very loud. And so the first night it rained in the dome, we were both like, oh, you can actually hear rain. It's it's interesting, though. It's not quite like a tin roof. It's like almost like a, I don't know, the passengers said it sounds like a Brazilian drum almost. Like it's it's, it's a little bit dampened. It's not quite like a tin roof sound. Um, so it's very unique, but you can definitely hear the rain. I guess I'm sad that right now it isn't raining because it would be awesome. But I also think that hearing like a constant yeah. tapping of the roof might have been a little challenging. So that's great. Now I think there's a regular laundry room. Now we're yeah. going through. <laughs> Absolutely. A laundry room. Come this room. way. <laughs> so this is just a regular kind of equipment room. It's got the. Uh, <laughs> furnace, these nice Kenmore elites, they're probably about <laughs> still working. <laughs> hey guys, I, I have a, a question. Yeah. Uh, after seeing the, the furnace, 
you know, a lot of people want to know with unique homes like this, is it energy efficient? Yeah, it's actually, so this house is about 2,400 square feet. Uh, so it's all natural gas fired. And we keep the house pretty much, I don't know, like 68 degrees or so, which is about what we kept our small house at um, in Southeast Portland. That house was 670 square feet and our gas bill for the winter is almost identical. Yeah. So if that says anything, I, I feel like it is pretty energy efficient relative to the size of the house. Um, and also it says a lot about, you know, old leaky hundred year Portland homes. <laughs> and making the domes more green has been a priority of ours. And one of our first uh, quarantine projects was installing solar panels. So there's now solar panels on top of the shop, which. Yeah. I'm Unfortunately, it's not the greatest area for solar, but it's enough to, um, one of our incentives there too is the property is on a well. And so um, it does give a battery backup. If um, you lose grid power, you can still power the well and things like that. This is the office, which we're not gonna go into, but very pinky in the brain. <laughs> and then this is the guest bedroom. And so this room and the office are actually the same. So there's a big dome and then there's a little dome on the side. And in speaking to uh, Francisco's wife, I guess they kept the beds in the small rooms and used the other room as her bedroom hanging out area. And I found that round bed frame off Craigslist for $60 after we moved in and I was very excited. <laughs> Do you have an interest in like when you're designing the space and picking up pieces to keep it, keep the pieces round at all? Yeah. Oh. So it, it's been, so this bed was just one that was kind of a little bit out of convenience and, you know, we put together here, but it was um, left here in pieces. Yeah. And we, we fixed it up. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, we have you know, a spare bedroom uh, bed. And I think what would be best is if you actually did custom made, you know, to the shape, then, then it would be most optimal, but it's a little tricky because everything has to be on a, you know, compound curve and not, it's not nothing straight. Um, so that, that's a little bit of trickiness to get right. Um, but I think uh, it probably would be worth the effort to do over in the long run. Over time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can we yeah. continue around? Maybe yeah. go outside again, yeah. see the yeah. beauty of the house. We have a normal bathroom with oh, yeah. just regular walls. Very <laughs> so, yeah, we can head back out. Do you think you'll be here long term? Oh, yes. Planning on it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need long enough to be able to fix it up appropriately. Uh, I think it's definitely our forever home. <laughs> What's the next project that you're going to do? Uh, oh, probably. yeah, for, well, I guess we keep joking about Dota or Palapa, but um, basically we'd like to build some uh, outdoor uh, kind of greenhouse roof style uh, off the front. Um, right, right so. over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where there's a chair on the ladder, just put a nice overhang because we're worried with the fall and winter not being able to see our friends much just yeah. well so we thought we'd make a nice covered area with the heater and yeah. nice hangout area let's get away yeah. from that person <laughs> cutting <laughs> down a tree or whatever they're doing oh there. yeah a kwanza hut that's kind of cool yeah so this is uh one of the main reasons that we looked for the property in the first place is we were trying to find a, um, a shop for the, the work that i do for my business which is uh, research and development of wave energy conversion technology and just so happened to be uh, attached to these domes on the property. So <laughs> it works out pretty well. If we come around here, we can see the domes even a little bit better, right? So I'm really excited about this house. Um, it's a work on the roof, which uh, we realized all owners took a different approach. Is they would just place a ladder and then kind of like shimmy their way up. So one of the first things Alex did was put a permanent ladder walkway so we can access the top to work on leaks and start covering it with a waterproof roofing paint. Um, it's actually very flat up there in the middle, which is very surprising. Huh. Are there special like like insurance concerns or whatever? You're surrounded by all these trees, yeah. you're living in these domes. 
Yeah, it, I guess. This was a lot of uh, waiting on the phone to get it insured. Yeah. But we did it. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> Thank it's, you, it's USA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's awesome. Crazy. Especially with the fires we just had, we were a little concerned. But. Nothing yeah, came too close. Nothing came too close. So, how would your life different, do you think, because you live in a dome home compared to like one of the places you used to live before, for example? Um, you have to get dressed properly every time you leave the house. I used to run out the garbage in my pajamas and then people would be outside taking pictures. So you have to, I learned that quickly, just, you know, <laughs> before stepping out, make sure you're fully dressed. Um, I think for, for work, it's nice because I can, I, you know, it's the first time I've been able to really work from home. So that makes it really nice to be able to just walk across and that's my commute. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a neat spot. It's um, kind of a little bit of an oasis in these hills up here. So yeah, very neat. It's, it's pretty calming in that way. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. What else, what are the special things that we haven't covered so far that you think we should know about this home? I guess there's, we have found some of the uh, secret rooms. <laughs>